close to me. This better be Princess Stephanie. Hello? Cuz? Janice? It's Gina. But they, do, they don't know if she's gonna be okay. They can't get her to wake up. Janice? The candy store. It just blew up. We were on the sidewalk. Where are you? Um, the Memorial Hospital. I'll be there as soon as I can catch a flight. In each case, food was taken from the pantry, a meal was prepared, and left simmering on the... Where the hell is Tony? But why is everybody looking at me? Run the request form by K-9. Yeah, well, Portland's got a couple detector dogs down there. I don't... Come in. I want at least one of them up here by tomorrow. Well, do what you can. Just give me the dog. Tony! Hey, how are you? Boy, what a time you picked to drop by. I got a bomber out there putting a the fear of God into this whole town. So what, you back for more post-grad? That's the trouble with you federal egg heads, why? Gina Angelo is my goddaughter. Gina? At the candy store last night, the little girl was hurt in the explosion. Oh, gee, Tony, I did Here, sit down. Is she all right? Yeah. They don't know yet. She's conscious, but not lucid. It's the third bombing in two weeks. Tell me about it. Well, first the office of a Japanese conglomerate down at the docks, then a magazine stand downtown, and now a candy store. And the guy always sends a letter to the Seattle Ledger, and then sometime that day, boom. 
When did you receive his last letter? About two hours ago. I could have our criminal profiling unit here in six. We've got the latest technology and two guys who know how to run it. Great. Most experience our expert can claim is he once fragged his jive lieutenant in Vietnam. Let me use a phone. Unfortunately, we've also got a commander and a commissioner who thrive on red tape. Tony would take at least five working days to process a request like that. Captain, city maintenance found a device downtown. Bomb squad's on the way. Let's go. For 12 days now, this city has been a hostage to fear as the unknown bomber continues his spree. The device discovered this morning by city sanitation workers is attached to the bottom of a manhole cover along one of the busiest commuter routes in the downtown area. Police experts believe the bomber is on an environmental protest. Regardless, he seems intent on leaving injury and destruction in his wake. Al Swirling, Channel 3 News, downtown. Where are we? We got a box attached under a manhole. We're going to freeze it with liquid nitrogen and get it out of here. All right. Nobody move. Don't let anybody move. Take pictures of the crowd, everybody. Get me your phone. Let me talk to my people in D.C. What are you doing in Seattle? My godchild was in an explosion last night. I'm sorry. It's a serial bomber. Another explosion went off five minutes ago. I'm at the site. Well, describe the location, Tony. Downtown city block. We're on the street. Where was the bomb? Fastened beneath the manhole cover. Do you still have an audience? Somebody's taking pictures now. Send some people into the crowd. Look for somebody with his hand on his pants or his eyes glazed over. Anything to indicate he's getting off on it. Keep going. Well, we want to know what this bomb is made out of. So you're going to be looking for two things. Trace evidence and explosive residue. Trace evidence is all the stuff that's hooked up to the bomb, like wires, clips, the timer. Also, start a spiral search from the bomb site and work outwards. Pick up everything you find, even if you think it's just junk. What else? Explosive residue is what's left in the bomb chemically. I want you to photograph any burn marks or flame trails. Also, get samples of the burns. Use adhesive tape or a vacuum cleaner with a clean bag. Check and see if any windows were broken nearby. Send us the fragments. We can pull some residue off the glass. Anything else that might have trapped pieces of the bomb? Yeah, the dead cop. Out of the corner, uh, check the carbon residue in his skin, hair, and clothing. Send us any fragments you find in his body. This place looks like a circus. How soon can you get us an invite? We're having a little problem with the local bureaucracy, but I got a feeling this will speed things up. An agent with a personal involvement. It's trouble. Today's bomb went off right here, side street downtown. The one in the candy store was here. Magazine stand, here. The Japanese business office, right here. The locals think it was an environmental protest. Turns out there's a division of the Japanese company in the homeland that hunts whale. Fact known by the environmentalists who are up on these things. It's a copy of the bomber's first letter. It's addressed to the Seattle Ledger Health and Science Editor. The pollution, the stink, stop. The scarring, stop. The agony, the waste, stop. Signed, Clean Slate. He sends telegrams? Nope, it's Ian Sub's writing style. Well, he does sound like an environmental activist. But a candy store, a magazine stand, a city street. General antagonism towards the modern urban environment. The news media, the junk food we eat, the city itself. Mm, there's a lot of positive organizations we could look into. Brotherhood of the Tree, Save the Cetaceans, Rural Lesbian Separatist Movement. What? <laughs> I'm getting too old. <laughs> Did you pick anybody out of the crowd? As per your instructions, glassy eyes, hands down the pants. We found two winos and a guy who claimed he was adjusting himself. We had to release him. Mistake, Henry. There really stupid. There is no law against self-adjustment. You better at least have gotten the guy's name and address. Look, he was here on business from Minneapolis, all right? It's the guy's first day in town. Hey, can you handle this? 
Or do you want to go back to D.C.? I was out of line. I'm sorry. 1279, clear. What about those letters? Well, he leaves them at the paper, and the bomb always goes off sometime that day. Well, give me a time span. Oh, geez, I don't know. Within 12 hours. Analog, Wesley. You must be using an alarm clock or a watch as a timing device. Simple setup. I'm being beeped. It's got to be the commissioner. Later. Wait, you said he leaves the letters at the paper. Where? Puts them in the mail slot in the building lobby. We've got it staked out right now. Where are the original letters? Still at SID. We couldn't find any prints. Any unusual watermarks, printing codes, indentations from previous writing? No, we didn't find anything. Okay, well, I'll send the letters to Washington. I'll run them through the works, including the threat dictionary. The what? It's psycholinguistic analysis based on writing style, grammar, repeated words, use of metaphor. It's sometimes possible to make informed guesses about age, race, socioeconomic background, a general psychological state. It can be as specific to the author as a signature. I guess you couldn't just check the return address, huh? Yeah. Where are you going? The hospital's on the way back to the station. I thought I'd visit Gina. You want some company? Yeah, OK. Good night, Henry. Threat dictionary. you is there a man a secretor it's impossible to tell there's no saliva on the envelope smart enough not to lick an envelope he knows we'll get hold of unless he just doesn't like the taste of envelope glue or maybe he's a clean freak all that stuff in his letters about stopping the filth a guy like that wouldn't be putting his tongue anywhere it didn't belong Uh-huh. Uh-huh? Don't let me disturb you. Let's see how this one matches our Seattle explosion. For three. Go. Twenty years ago, I'd have gotten grounded for doing this. Good news. He heard you and Alan were on the case. Gave himself up. Huh? We got a serial number off the insulation. The wires from a supplier that sells an institutional size quantities. We're putting together a list, but basically he had to get it from one of a dozen electronics firms, a university, or a handful of construction companies. That narrows it right down, doesn't it? 
Well, we've narrowed down the explosive. Pentalite. It's a combination of TNT and PETN. Oh, also, we didn't get any saliva off the envelope. Our bomber is either real cagey or he's got a thing about germs. Look, Starks just assumed the environmental angle from the letters. That's why they said the first bombing was at a whaling outfit. The case of overthink. The whaling outfit's a conglomerate that's called Floating World. This U.S. office has nothing to do with whaling, a lot to do with perfume. You see, he would know that. I've seen their advertising all over town. It sells as much sex as it does perfume. Which feeds into the second bombing, magazine store. There was a big porn section. Sounds more psychological than political. Take a look at the letter that came right before the bombing on the street. Child not intentional. Stop. Healthy cells sometimes destroyed with cancer. Stop the pollution. Stop the filth. Clean slate. Now, in this letter alone, the word stop appears three times. The threat dictionary puts stop under the intimidation and demands category, but also under suicidal. What about his reference to cancer? Well, the bomber's letters use a curious choice of words while on the surface making demands about cleaning up the city. Cancer, blood, disease are all classed under body, but also under suicide. And I've come up with a profile of our unsub based on what we've found so far. Late 20s to early 30s. Male Caucasian, above average intelligence, a family structure that promoted isolation. It's possible that as a child, he was extremely ill or was forced to care for a sick family member. That last one's a maybe. No, that feels right. His repeated use of a word like scars could be referring to his own scars, physical or psychological. Trouble with women, relationships. The bombings are a projection of his own body onto the city. Perfume, pornography, candy. That brings it all closer to the body, but how does the bomb in the street fit in? He bombs the city and pretends he's creating a clean slate. Unfortunately, the last letter suggests that he's made the leap from the inanimate city to physical death. Sickness of pollution must stop. The noise. Policeman not intentional. Girl a mistake, but see now the rightness. Stop. Clean slate. which means that sometime in the next eight hours, we're gonna have a lot of dead bodies. So you see, by integrating B, divisible by itself, and C, divisible by itself, and B. You get two factors divisible by themselves, which is Y, which gives you A. Any questions? Fine. Then for Thursday, I want you to do the uh, integration problems on page 72. See you then. Mr. Benton, I wanted to explain why I didn't hand my homework in. Sir, I just turned it in on Thursday. Well, actually, I think I'm kind of lost. I was wondering if you could maybe tutor me or something. I'd make myself completely available to you. I'm really very busy. Perhaps uh, another teacher could help. Well, I was kind of hoping you could help. I mean, when you explain it, it Everything just seems to make sense. Please? Well, I'll think about it. Thanks.
you doing? <laughs> Dreaming. Something. Something about a beach. And everywhere I looked, there were breasts, all shapes and sizes. It was a festival of naked skin. You know what you could do for me? What? When I go, Paul. Hey. It's a fact of life, right? Oh, it doesn't bother me, Albert. I accept it. I wish you could, too. You're gonna be fine. You have got to stop doing this to yourself. It's not your fault. <laughs> well, I'm not doing anything to myself. I'm just trying to make you feel better. Grandpa. Mom. Me. Can only fight the big C so long. <laughs> it's not your fault. It didn't get you. Albert, it's not your fault. If you were smart, instead of sitting here at home every night, You'd be out right now with some broad you hardly knew, spending way too much money. <laughs> oh, for God's sake, life is too short, Albert. Pass me my smokes. What else have I got to do? I got something here that'll make you feel better. Nothing in that bag is gonna make me feel any better. Paul, when I think of you lying here like this, I... having a good time has no meaning for me. You can't make this disappear. You can't make this feel good. Yeah, it hurts. I know. to use the phone. They're over there.
when Krista looked in the mirror, she saw her sister Clara looking back at her from the other side. I called Tony! Hey, sweetie, I missed you. Mm. I miss you too. Uncle Tony, would you read the bear part? Uh, I'm not very good at this. <laughs> Please. Okay. Cover me if I start making a fool of myself. There's something wrong with the men's room. There's water coming out the door. Oh, thanks. Water running in men's room confirms gender, obsession with cleanliness. He knew the nightclub started at 10. The bomb went off a few minutes after 7. Why? What was he thinking? Is he thinking? How are you? The hospital. How is she? She's going to be all right. Good. Another couple of hours, this place would have been packed. University kids, mostly. Anybody hurt? An employee. Where's Ann? She's inside. Nobody else was hurt in this. Well, I wouldn't know about that. I don't deal in miracles. I don't usually bear out a lot of facts. Can I ask you something weird? You ever think about having kids? Sure, all the time. The lifestyle doesn't really want to hear about that right now. How's Gina? She's okay. She needs to get her strength back. I read to her, you know? Oh, yeah? yeah. Mr. Tough Guy. Hey. hey, I'm pretty good, I might add. I need a couple encores to get out of there, you know? Does this guy know what he's doing? Does he know how close he gets? To death? Yeah, I think he's starting to. I think he intends to get much closer. This guy thinks he has access to this whole town, right? Well, he doesn't have access to Gina. Hey, guys. Come you on. don't even know it was him. It was him. I know this guy. Would you let me do my job, please? You're doing your job, Tony. You're just doing it a little loudly. Look, it was bad enough you guys had to x-ray the bear like it was some... A bomb? But now you want her to look at pictures? She saw the guy. She might be able to point him out. I don't want her to point him out, Tony. I want her to forget it. Janice. No. Just stop it, Tony, okay? You're scaring her. You're scaring Gina. Dr. Winter to OR, please. Dr. Winter to OR, please. You know what it took for our unsub to subject himself to this place? The hospital. Sickness, the smell of disease. Whoa, the, the arrogant bastard's toying with us. Maybe, no, maybe, I don't think so. I don't think so. Maybe the bomb going off prematurely in the disco was not an accident. Maybe he's starting to understand that he doesn't want to hurt anyone but himself. The gift to Gina was an apology, Tony. Maybe even his cry for help. He's crying to the wrong guy. Oh, you're gonna be a happy guy. I got all your favorite tapes. I got French
God, I'm sorry, Paul. It's getting a lot harder for me. In the filth. Uh, I, it's harder for me to understand what I'm doing. The scars. There's so many scars. <laughs> in the city. So do you. What do you see when you're walking? Other people? You don't like that, do you? What else? Perfume, a woman's body, seductive, terrifying. What do you see when you're walking? Do you look at their faces? Do you talk to them? No, no, you turn away from them. You turn away from them, you look away. Do you take the bus? Is that your bus stop up there? Did you pass a candy store every day? It's pretty, all that candy. Pretty. Tempting. Yeah, that's it, tempting. Perfume company, porn shop. Candy store, a nightclub, tempting, desire, the body. Why a street? Not a street, not a street. A sewer, the body. A sewer, a pawn shop, filth. Stop the filth, you said. Perfume, candy, sweet, temptations, a disco. Lots of bodies, we don't like that. The bomb, the bomb was in the speaker. Stop the noise, stop the bodies, the filth. Stop the desire, the temptation. Stop it. Stop it from coming in. That's it. That's it. The bomber hates the body, his own body. Hates its needs, hates its desires, hates everything that comes in through the senses. He's trying to destroy the entry points. Porn shop for the genitals, sewer for the rectum, candy for the mouth, perfume for the nose, loud music for the ears. What's left? The eyes. Three optometrists, four art galleries, six theaters. We're running out of time. Here we go. Let's get the equipment. Let's get the hell out of here. Come on, boy. Check for mercury before you touch it. No mercury vapor. Some guy's put in a mercury switch that'll set the bomb off if it's moved. Hold it there. Alan, you see this? Yeah. Could be two thin layers of foil separated by one of paper. Cuts through the foil, completes the circuit. Bomb could explode. It's a possibility. Have you got a plastic hole punch? Good. Let's peel the paper back and check the foil. No foil. All right, now, can you widen the cut a little? Very simple. By the book, explosive contained in a thermos, thermos wired to a six volt battery, and two model airplane glow plugs used for a detonator. And the battery is connected to an alarm clock, which is set to detonate in less than two hours. One hour before the first show. Very carefully remove the lens. Make a large cut. 
Careful. I hope this guy's wiring isn't shaky. <laughs> Sorry, bad joke. Square it off. That's it. Pull back the cardboard. Wire cutters. Just one more cut. Show's over. Anything idiosyncratic about the way this thing was made? The only signature to this device is that there is no signature. This was done strictly by the book. It'd be nice to know what book. Anti-insurgent strategies for domestic law enforcement. Volume two. Gold plug is a giveaway. Till now, I didn't know what to use for a detonator. This whole thing is diagrammed right out of a book I had in college. College? Alan, Norma, you guys said... The wires used in this bomb could have come from the university. And in less than two hours, if he's not gratified, he's going to plan another one. And fast. I know the campuses. Well, let's go. Well, who checked the book out last? It was a poli-sci student in the spring of 84. Our bomber must have uh, Xeroxed the diagrams. That's why we're running these prints. OK. Eric Level, SDS activist, busted for public disturbance and resisting arrest, 71. He's had enough time to work up a full head of steam. Or he just likes to fantasize. Or he's got oily skin. His print is 20 years old. Moving on. Albert Benton. Picked up once when he was 14 for setting fire to a field. Fingerprinted and released to his parents. Address 386 South Wasson Lane. Driver's license. 386 South Wasson Lane. He still lives at the same address. Fire starter, never moved out of his parents' house. It all fits the profile. Let's pick him up. Where's Tony? I never even saw him leave. We'll never get there before he does. He's gone. He never even said goodbye. Who's gone? Albert. Yes. Who? Albert's gone. I'm Paul. Albert was such a waste anyway, you know. He never did anything. He never felt anything. Did Albert leave that for you? And every time I tried to stop him, I tried to make him more accepting. He hurt a little girl, you know. He put a lot of people in pain. The little girl's gonna be all right. 
Albert was going to be all right. You really cared about her. You must have been really concerned to go to her like that. She was sleeping. We can go see her. Would you like to go see her? Huh? Here, let me hold that for you, and then we can go. No. No. Maybe you better go now. You never meant to hurt any of them, Albert. They were all accidents. I told you. My name is Paul. And you won't hurt anyone now, will you, Paul? You really cared about your brother. You took good care of him, didn't you? I took good care of all of them. And, and now everybody's gone. It's okay. To go on, Albert. It's okay to live. But it hurts. I'm in position around the sides and the back. I'm ready to move. Just give him another 30 seconds. Wes. It's okay, Westy. Everything's okay. It's all right. It's all right. Easy, easy. Better get your bomb squad in there. It's okay, I got it away from him. It's not gonna go off. We're gonna need a vehicle. There's a body in sight. Whose body? His brother. His twin. From what I could tell, he died of natural causes. Well, that explains a few things. Man, did you get a look in that guy's eyes? He is out there. Well, good work, kid. Ned, let's take a look. Thanks for asking. I'm okay. Tony. What? You okay? I'm fine. I'm fine. Now, don't be such a stranger, cuz. I already made reservations for President's Day, St. Ambrose's Feast. And the anniversary of the invention of the cotton gin. Yes. You can't tell me I'm neglecting my gotcha. Yes, we can. Oh, yeah? Well, then maybe I ought to take you with me, huh? Can I, Mom? Don't tempt me. Give me a kiss. I love you. Thank you. Bye, honey. Bye, Uncle Tony. You got a minute? I think uh, government knows they're spending this kind of money on a guy who goes soft in the middle of a case. I hardly think you went soft, Tony. You talked that guy down like a cop talks down a jumper. I wanted him to jump in. The bastard killed a cop. He hurt Gina. I wasn't trying to save him. I was trying to save me. You could have left that room any time you wanted. No, I couldn't. I wanted to throttle the guy. But when I saw the bomb, I froze. I couldn't move. I was scared. Maybe. But you held it together and you got both of you out of the room alive. Maybe your fear tripped a switch and you 
went directly from anger to survival or compassion. Do they know I was scared? They? Westy. Well, he knows the danger you're in. I think he's smart enough to fill in the rest. Now, how come he hasn't said anything to me? You didn't follow procedure. You went out on your own and you got in trouble. But you came back a hero. If you want a pat on the back, Tony, go ask for one. Yeah? I'll have my report on your desk in the morning. Good. Looking forward to reading it. Thank you.